I have already put some rich onion gravy powder in my jug and now I'm going to put the oxo in. Don't forget, sprinkle it in like that. Sprinkle it in. Sprinkle and stir. Now then, the gravy is now complete to put on my steak when it's done. But let's go to the steak now. Here it is, tenderized steak. Now then, it's for two of us, so what I'm going to do, I will cut it in half. But first, to save time, I'm going to put the butter on first on all the lots. So I just spread some butter on like this, just steady, like that. Put it on, not too much, just like that. And then turn him over and put some more butter on. Keep it going, like that. Now then, once you've done that, that's all right. put the lid back on the butter. And now, as I've told you before, it's for two people, so I need to cut it in two pieces. So I get my one handle knife. Remember, one handle? No two handles, because it would be very awkward with two handles. And the very clever, the British invented one handle knife. So here we go, and we cut it in half. Like that, just like that. Time now to put it in my one handle frying pan. I've already put some fat in. It's lard, and don't forget, butter and lard does mix. So you put it in, put one piece in there, and another piece in there. Now then, the idea of this, doing tenderized steak, is to keep turning it over over and over and over and don't forget you must have your potatoes on and your sprouts because i want them to be done same time as my canadian steak now just watch this what i'm going to do i only just put it in but i turn it over like that and i turn that over like that now then you might say well, what's he turned it over too quick for? Just keep doing it. Turn it over and turn it over. Now then, what I'm going to do later on, when I've been turning my steak over and over again, I know it is done because I'm using this fork as well. Now, the idea with a fork is to turn it over and also you can tell when it's done. Very clever, the British. So what I do is turn it over again, like that, and turn it over again, like that. It looks so, we're going to have the commercial break now, and, and when I come back, I'll show you what I'm going to do with my gravy. And remember this, I am the best gravy maker in the country. In fact, I've been doing, I've been doing gravy now for, for 60, 60 odd years. And when I was nine or something like that, People in Denneby used to come on a Sunday for a basin full of gravy. I used to charge them sixpence, but it got busier and busier, so I started selling two for one. Buy one, get one free. And trade came up, trade were like a... Anyway, I mean, the, the council has put me forward for knighthood for making gravy, so you never know, I might be the knight of the gravy. But after the commercial, I'll show you what to do with the gravy and the tenderized steak. Don't go away. Welcome back to a Ready Steady Cook. Now, as you notice that my steak is being dried away there, and I've been turning it all the like this all the time, and my taters are getting done, and my sprouts are getting done. The most important thing now is the gravy. Now in the, in the pan here, you'll notice that some of the meat has come off. And, and that's because of the holes in the steak. Now, what I'm going to do now, I stir the gravy up, stir it up. And what I want you to do, I'm going to pour it over the steak. Like that, over it goes, over the steak. Oh, it's beautiful gravy, this. Over it goes, 
On the it goes now. Now then, all the gravy is in the pan with the tenderized steak. Now then, why I poured it over the steak is because the gravy will go into the meat and the meat will go into the gravy. A mixture sort of thing, isn't it? Now then, put the lid on and let it boil in time for the potatoes to be done and the sprouts. Now, the gravy. If you want my recipe for the gravy, uh, get it on CFAX uh, number 2235674 dot slash slash dot co gravy. And I'll give you that again. It's on CFAX 2235674 dot slash flash dot go gravy no or if you get it at w.h smith's you'll see my book on, on the top shelf uh, and it's two for one now and uh, it looks as though we're having another break so don't go away i will see you after the break to 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 present it on the plates to eat so until then i will see you uh, welcome back to a ready steady cook. Now, the final part of my cooking is presentation. How to put it on the plate, etc. Now, everything's done, the steak's done, and look at that beautiful gravy. Now then, what I've turned the gases off. Don't need them no more now. Pop, 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 and that one off. And then we pour the water from the new potatoes away. See what I mean? We're having a 100 pound. You've got another hand spare. And uh, they're very clever, the British. And away it goes like that. Pour the water out. There's some people use this water for stock, but uh, I don't. And put that there. And, uh, and then there's my sprouts. And drain the water up again. And there it goes. There it goes. Sprouts ready. And now presentation is like this. Get your spoon and put some sprouts on the plate. Like that. Make it look nice. You must have it look nice. And again there like that. And just put a couple more on there and a couple more on here. Now then, put your pan back on there and then it's time for the potatoes. Up oh, to go. Beautiful potatoes these. And then you put them on there in a nice order. And, and, and then here, a nice order there. Oh, beautiful. Now that's enough there. And that's enough there. And I'll just put another couple on there. And then pour the water out. You don't need it. And, and then the final thing is the steak. Take the lid off. Put it down there and get your fork and put some steak on there like that. And, and of course, some steak on there like that. Now then, what we want now <clears throat> is some beautiful gravy on. So here we go. We've got the 100 pound and you just pour it on there. Pour it on the beautiful gravy. Beautiful. Look at it. You, you'll never get this anywhere else, you know. And don't forget my recipe. If you want it, oh, you can do your Smiths. They have them there. Here we go. Here we go. Put some more gravy on. Because gravy, oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Now then, that is a good presentation. Now, what I want to tell you now, uh, as you know, this is the last series of my Ready Steady Cook because I'm going to the States filming. But when I come back, I'm going to show you how to make a bilberry and pear pie. So until then, from Ready Steady Cook, goodbye. <laughs>